invite to the stage Shigeo Katsu, who will talk about what makes him happy. Um, can you hear me in the back? All right. Good evening, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining us here for this very first uh, TEDx event here at Nazarbayev University. And congratulations to the whole student body for taking the initiative and uh, starting a new tradition. And uh, Josh had already, in his marvelous introduction, talked about uh, how the whole initiative came about. I want to also add that when uh, Atirke contacted me and said, uh, we want you to talk, I said, what about? I said, happiness, what makes you happy? And I said, okay, um, should be okay, in general I'm a happy person. Uh, but as the days you know, passed and it got closer and closer to today's event, I started to feel not really unhappy, <laughs> but I wasn't so sure what I was supposed to say. You know? If somebody asks you, what makes you happy, are you able to answer immediately? Well, anyway, so what do I do? I look for inspiration. So I went to Howard, you know, our, our digital intellectual Howard, Howard, and asked him, what am I going to talk about? And I see that you're talking and associate colors with happiness. So I said, hmm, that's good. So I took a leaf out of his presentation. I'm not so sure I haven't seen his, but and said, aha, as you all know, colors and emotions are very close to the associated. The left picture of color me blue. You know, you see a sense of sadness. The right one, do you know what that is? Those of a certain generation do remember, yes, it's, it's a, a famous song of the Rolling Stones before your parents were born, I guess. Um, it had a little different side meaning, but you know, painted black sends a sense of despair. You know? The colors also convey political emotions, you know. I don't need to go into this one because you all know what happens between the red and the blue states as recently as a couple of months ago. But also, there's a sense of wonder. And you see colors, emotions. And this is a picture taken from the famous Hubble uh, telescope, space telescope. Now, why do I always want to talk about these colors? And the reason is because when you go to the next thing, Somehow, modern business attire, look at me. <laughs> Typically, dark suits. <laughs> Why? I mean, Josh is very elegant. He has a nice red shirt. You know, so in, in his case, it's very fashionable. But typically, probably, maybe it's because it's supposed to take emotions out. But on the other hand, why does everybody feel they have to wear this kind of shirt? That's probably because it goes with convention. You know? If nobody wants to stick out, somehow the custom or the general sense is fit in in order to be seen as a successful business person or business uh, successful professional, you have to wear a dark suit. Now, one of these days, in the not so near future, you probably will all go through this as well. Hmm? However, before you get there, you have maybe precious little period, but a lot of time actually, right now, to think about whether you really want to fit into this convention. I think right now is a time where you actually can think about stretching the envelope, run around maybe the, the rubber wall, you know, do some things, a challenge convention. You know, here you are here in this academic enterprise basically to challenge convention. You challenge established maybe knowledge, maybe wisdom, but you are all here because you all try to find new ways of thinking about maybe age-old questions. That is a quest as an intellectual that you all want to take. Alright? So what does it have to do with happiness? Well, 
I mean, nobody wants to really stand out, be embarrassed in front of people, that's why you all sort of tend to conform. And when we're embarrassed, we also don't feel very happy, no? Um, and, you know, <laughs> even animals apparently do have a sense of embarrassment. But what I try to say here, however, is do not, do not be afraid of being embarrassed. Okay? There are no silly questions, there may be silly answers, but there are always, all, any of your questions in your quest for knowledge is are good. Any of your questions are intelligent, so do not feel that you will have to be embarrassed, okay? Now, well, will however succeed lead automatically to more happiness? And this is actually a big debate that's been happening, uh, going on, especially in the economic profession, because sometimes this economic profession does not know what to do uh, and tries to appropriate from other disciplines as well. And uh, this is a real issue as to how do you measure happiness? What should be um, uh, an element in terms of, uh, you know, is happiness to be immediately equated with more material income? Well, yeah, for those of you who study economics, I suggest that you uh, read Mr. Esterlin's book, uh, The Happiness of Economics. There is a so-called Esterlin paradox that he established. Basically it says, you know, happiness in the rich countries and so at certain income level. And he established it around $70,000. Beyond that, happiness is not going to increase anymore. And this, together with the recent events, when you talk about it, globally, there's a real search on as to how do you help me measure happiness? Is GDP really the right indicator to measure happiness or not? And there are countries such as Bhutan, where they already really have really developed a gross national happiness indicator. Just simply to show that there are many, many different ways of trying to approach us of measuring happiness and what we are supposed to be. Which brings me to this question as to what is happiness? And you can tell that I'm trying to beat around the bush because I'm not coming to my question, but uh, in general, talk about what happens. And you see all these things. And as I cannot remember all the things that they said, I just have to, from time to time, look at my own uh, writings. And, you know, um, I did try to do a little bit of homework and talked about what is happiness and tried to find citations. And cross the model, you can say that there are about nine or so big categories. Those um, who think that happiness is sharing, somewhere there too. Others who think that happiness is cash flow. I had a Chinese friend, a friend of my colleague who had this on his wall. Um, and then there are people who are born pessimists and say happiness is a delusion, doesn't exist. Or others who are more, a little bit more philosophical and say happiness is when you pursue happiness. It's not attainment of happiness, it's the journey that counts. Or others who say, well, in a way, yes, it's good to share, but you don't want to share it really with people who are less fortunate than you, because those people will not enjoy it. Um, and then it gets really more uh, philosophical. Uh, happiness has to be sought within yourself. You have to create it. Um, and, you know, Aristotle and others, we go back to Josh almost, you know, talked about how important it is to find happiness within yourself and you have to work on it and create it. Um, but also, more recently, Mahatma Gandhi said, well, happiness is when what you think, what you say, and what you do are aligned. So there's a moral dimension to happiness. In other words, are you able to look yourself in the, in the mirror every morning that you get up? Are your thoughts, what you say, and what you do aligned? And, of course, happiness, uh, let's say, resides in small daily occurrences. Smell the roses. And, of course, at the end, somebody who summed it up and said, happiness exists because unhappiness exists. 
Without unhappiness, you wouldn't be unhappy. So, and so on. So there are many other ways. You know, you go and Google and find out in, in the internet. There are or in, in, in Scott Overmeyer's uh, place, you will soon be able to find out through avatars where you find happiness and how to find it as well. Um, but the important thing is, and this is where I start to go into my own thing. Okay? What do you do? What does it all mean for me? I was thinking and said, well, uh, what can I share with you that may be relevant to you? So I said, well, obviously at the very big picture level, I should say also from my former background, I'm extremely happy to see that the world seems to be able to, even if stutteringly, to uh, get out of the big, big economic and financial crisis that we've seen in 2008. Very slowly, but you know, that's a great source of happiness. But that's sort of too bad. But maybe important, still important, big picture happiness. I think we can, I can also say that, uh, and very much relevant here, I'm extremely happy that uh, we are here together and we have launched together this important and cherished enterprise that we call Nazarbayev University. Okay? And uh, I'm really thankful that uh, you all, students in particular, have taken the big jump and decided to come here and be the pioneers and hopefully you will carry on and become tomorrow's leaders thought leaders, tomorrow's digital or not intellectual, and all these good things that Kazakhstan needs. I'm also happy and thankful to the faculty and all our staff who also take a big deep breath and decided to come here to take part in creating something exciting and new. And overall, you know, it's only very few times that you will find out in your life when, it, when it's your turn. In life, you only have very few times when you really can say, I was there at the beginning to build something great. So you all are part of it, and that makes me really happy. Now, having said that, um, it's also the small things that count. So don't forget, do smell the roses in your rush to get your degrees. And go out and become big shots. Do not forget. It's a small thing that counts and that makes us all happy. You know, yesterday, it was a nice day. I mean, people ask me, have you gotten used to the cold here in Astana? And I said, yes. And one of the reasons here is when the sunlight, when, the, when, when there's bright sunlight, you see all these sparkling diamond dusts. And it's a wonderful, wonderful day. You know, nowhere else hardly can you find this. So these are the things that I think you all should not take for granted. And hopefully you will uh, cherish it. Now, so therefore, let me conclude with maybe four, four thoughts. All right? One is, this is uh, a picture that comes from a citation, or accompanies a citation, a sentence from Maxim Gorky. He said, Happiness always looks small when you hold it in your hand. But let go and you learn how big and precious it is. Right? The second thought I want to leave with you is, and this comes from Stendhal. He was a French uh, writer. In literature probably you will uh, hear about him or learn about him. He said, um, Happiness, to try to describe it, means to diminish it. Okay, so I've already diminished it. Maybe. And the third thought, this comes from an anonymous source. It says, every minute that you are angry, you lose 60 seconds of happiness. All right? So these are things that are on my mind and the message to you. What it all means for me to put it together for you all is 
Very, very important. It's your life. It's your life. Don't ever let it be defined by anybody else. Okay? So that is, for me, the most important message that I would like to take to you. And this is sort of the last philosophical question that I still even haven't answered really. Thank you very much.